hear me spot sometimes people like to call me uh <coughs> let's get started so we don't want to waste the time so uh this is here uh uh oh whoa, 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 hold on you facetime come right here okay you facetime to the channel make sure you come right here and subscribe let's go okay so now this is here a particle a particle with a mass oh so the particle has a mass so we have a particle here this particle has a mass so let's run the dot data equals six four times 10 power negative, uh, negative 7 kilogram and a charger off so we have a charger here what is a charger 3.20 times 10 power 19 coulomb okay is accelerated from race through the potential difference so for the most case uh, this is the most possible, possible diagram okay okay so now let's say you have a uh, power here and then here excuse me let's say something like this okay okay so let's just assume this is positive and this is negative you know so the particle here is positive let's say it come from this side this is a source but from race means initial velocity equal to zero so the particle is passing here so is it possible negative particle positive means it's positive what happened remember if this is a positive plate and this is a negative plate so what happened if it's positive means it's going to repel from here it's going to be more like this this is a rough sketch. It's going to be more toward to the negative side. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And now remember, if this is a positive plate and this is a negative plate, what happened? Means uh, this is uh, this is magnetic field. Okay? Because you know any magnet means you have a positive and negative. So this is going to be magnetic field. And you know the flux is going to be moving from positive to negative. So the flux is possibly, it's not possible, it's obvious, it's going to be moving like this. This is a flux because this is a magnetic field here. You know what I'm saying? And we see now these this charge here, which is if it's positive it means let's assume it's proton, it's proton means it's gonna be moving like this. You know, it's perpendicular to this magnetic flux. Can you see? Because it's making angle 90. Perpendicular. This one move this one, this one move, but when it comes to here, it should it's kinda, you know, attracted to this negative uh, negative uh, plate. You know why? It's attracted to the negative plate because it's negative and this stuff is positive. But if it was negative if this charger was negative, so what happened? It's just gonna go, and then the more it goes, if it's negative, it's just gonna be more attached to the positive. Because the charger, if it was negative, you know what I'm saying? Means this is negative, and then it's just gonna attract the electron. Let's say our charge is electron. So what happened if it charges electron? Means it's gonna pass here and then attract it more to the positive. Because negative always cold. Positive always called negative, you know what I'm saying? So now we say, okay, what do we have? So they give us a potential difference, means the potential difference between these two plates means from this plate here to here, means it has potential difference. What are the potential difference? 2.45 times 10 power 6, 2.45, 6 voltage, you know? Okay, now, now we go the particle then inter in the uniform oh so no, i just went too far so this part come from start from braces somewhere here so it came in an inter inter way in a unit form inter inter a uniform magnetic field oh so this one is magnetic field means uniform magnetic field if the particle velocity is perpendicular oh so the velocity of a particle the way it moves is perpendicular you see perpendicular to the magnetic flux or magnetic field perpendicular magnetic at all times means all the way Excuse me, so means this is something I uh, just assume because obviously it's going to come in there, it's going to be attracted to the negative. But I say all the way, means it's going to be perpendicular. But we know by any means it must be attracted here. You know what I'm saying? The way it goes because this is a positive charger, so the beginning. Now, if the particle velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field at all times, determine the magnetic, determine the magnitude of the magnetic force. Oh, so one and four. So we have a formula here. That interesting formula. So the formula say uh, for, my, uh, for force, you say force equal force equal to okay equal to Q V B Q V B. But for most cases, it must be sine of angle. So you say force equal to Q V B, but it must be sine of angle. You know what I'm saying? You know what sign of angle? Because this is how the more it goes, it's gonna, you know? So it's gonna make an angle, you know? 
is going to go in there, either go this way or go that way, depending on the sign of the particle. We say if it's electron, means it's negative. Electron is negative charge, means it, let's say negative, it's going to come in then, it's going to be attracted to the positive plate. But if it's positive, like in this situation, it's going to come and it's going to be attracted to the negative. So now, you must say QVB sine theta. So what is the angle for this case? They say, oh, it's perpendicular to the magnetic field. So you have to look, okay, uh, this particle, is it perpendicular? Which angle does it make with this magnetic field? But for this case, they say all the way. They mention somewhere here. All the time, it's perpendicular to the magnetic field. All the time means all the time is perpendicular. So what is our angle? So there's nothing this. Okay, so our angle, we know our theta is going to be 90. When two things are perpendicular, angle equal to 90. So this is going to be 90. Now, let's go. Do we have a Q? Q? Yes, we have a Q. We have a uh, potential difference. Oh, yeah. Okay, and you have a B? Yes. B is this one, 1.6 Magnetic field, a uniform case. So our B, go to 1.6 or T. So now we have already the force. So the force equal to Q. What is that Q? Our Q equal to? 3.20 times 10 power negative 19. Okay, and then times our V potential difference also we got it. 2.45 times 10.6 times B 1.6. 1.6. 1.6 and then times sine. Which sign? Sine of 90. But we know sine of 90 equal to 1. So we take that one, plug in the calculator. If you plug in the calculator, that one should get uh Okay, plug down the calculator, and then you're going to get your force equal to uh, 7.8. But you can plug it, right? I should have plugged for you. Come on, man. Okay, so 3.2 times times 10, and then exponential negative 19, negative 19 times. Okay, 2.45, 45 times 10, and then exponential 6. Okay, so when you plug everything, you're going to get 7.8, but you have to take two decimal places, right? This is a rough, take two decimal places. 10.8, uh, 7, 8, excuse me, 7, 8. 7, 8 point, uh, point six four times 10, uh, power negative 13, power negative 13. But with no force, you always measure force in Newton. So now, also, we have to get velocity, because if this particle moves, means we have to get the velocity of this particle. Let's get the velocity of this proton, if it's possible, you know it's proton. Okay, so we have a formula here. Remember, this particle move here, when objects move, it means it has a kinetic energy. So, also at the same time, this object has a certain potential. It has a potential, you know? So, we're going to say, okay, so kinetic energy for this case equal to potential energy. So, what is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy, you know, the formula of kinetic energy is a half mass times velocity squared. But a potential energy for this case is not like, uh, like normal MGH. No, it's not. But MGH is a Q times potential difference. This is velocity, but this is a potential difference. So we want to get what velocity? Because this object is going to move with the velocity. Now let's get velocity. It's easy, man. So I'm going to take this two multiply. So two is going to be two QV. Two QV, Q potential difference. And then uh, here, okay, it's going to be M velocity square. Okay, now we want to get velocity. So divided by M divided by M, so V square equal to QV over M. So we can get this uh, velocity divided by, so velocity of this object is two times uh, Q, you know, which we have times potential difference, so we got, potential difference, how we got, where's the potential difference, man? this one here, and then over mass, okay, and then square. Now let's plug it in the bottom, so uh, V equal to square root, Okay, two times. What is the charge? The charge we got 3.2, 3.2 times 10 power negative 19. Times potential difference equal to 2.45 times 10 power 6 over mass. What is the mass? Mass also is given. 6.64. So <laughs> I don't think that's a mass of electron. I'm not sure. But uh, we know it's possible, uh, possible, uh, possible uh, particle. So uh, I can't remember the mass of electron. I don't know if it's the same or is that okay. So this is what you need for the best party. So now velocity. Plug in the calculator. You get your velocity equal. If you plug in the calculator, uh, you might get possibly. But I make sure you plug right. Probably they made a mistake in plug it, but I believe it's the same number. Ten power negative twenty-seven. Negative twenty-seven. 
Velocity means meter per second. M stands negative one. You can say m per second. If you don't want to write this, you can say m per second. Write your velocity here. Velocity equal to two. So listen, I believe you learned from my methodology, you learned from my mistakes, you learned from how I do things. For all the face time, just come right here, okay? Subscribe, and here we go. Easy, man. I'm out. Easy.